Hi, let's talk just a little bit about protein binding to help you understand this important concept in pharmacodynamics. We're going to use one slide, and this is it. And you may recognize the image here from the textbook because um, that's where it came from. And I think it, pre uh, it presents a really good image to help you understand protein binding. And albumin is the protein we are choosing to talk about here. There are tons of proteins in the body. However, albumin is the most abundant protein in the body. And I'm gonna talk about drugs binding to protein. And if somebody's albumin levels are not in a normal state, that's gonna change the way that drug is going to travel and affect the body. Howie, um, so let's talk about this. Let's imagine we are looking at a restaurant and each one of those circles that says albumin is actually a table where four people can sit to eat. But, and these little green circles are people that want to come and eat at this restaurant. Well, you can see that there's only on this picture that see there's 12 seats available, but we have 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 little circles. So there's going to be um, four or five people who can't get a seat. So they have to go to another restaurant. And in order to go to another restaurant, they go through a doorway. That is where you see the capillary cell wall. And the cap, it says that up at the top, it's the red rectangles, capillary cell wall. And then down at the bottom where you see the red rectangles, it says capillary cell pore. And there really is a little pore between each one of those cell walls in the capillary. So the way that these people who want to eat get out of this restaurant to go to another restaurant is they go through the capillary cell pore. That's the door. Well, in the body, those are the drug particles that get used by the body. They get to come and enter into metabolism and maybe get a trans go through biotransformation and actually have an effect on the body. The, the green circles that are sitting at the albumin tables don't ever move into that area. That's represented at the top by this arrow that cannot get through the cell pore because they've all decided to sit at the albumin table and that albumin protein is too large to fit through the pore. So they have to stay in this restaurant right here. So now we have, we call those people that are sitting at the table those are bound drug. So you took an acetaminophen for a headache. The acetaminophen enters the bloodstream in the plasma and a certain proportion of it is going to bind to protein and probably albumin. It is the most abundant protein in our body. So that is the one we, we look at as a representation of um, how much protein binding can happen in a body. So you take your acetaminophen, it enters the bloodstream, and some of it is going to bind to albumin. The pieces that do not bind to albumin are the ones that will actually continue through the process, become metabolized, go through biotransformation, and actually help you get rid of your headache. The ones that are bound to the albumin will simply be uh, eliminated from the body. They are inactive. They cannot, so they're not moving around. They're not active, they're inactive. Only the unbound part is free to move and become active. And it's, it's a, it tends to be a difficult concept for um, a lot of people to understand protein binding, but that's basically what it is. Every drug has a certain amount of protein binding, but just like restaurants, some restaurants might be larger than others and have more tables available, or some restaurants might be more popular than others and really have a lot of people in there that want to get in there. Well, the analogy I'm using is to let you know that some drugs are, have a high affinity for protein binding and some drugs do not. Some are less than others. 
And so the drugs that have a high affinity for protein binding, you would imagine we have to give more of that drug in order to have free drug that can be active. We don't have to make that decision and understand that at our level. That is understood in the product development. During research and development um, in the pharmaceutical companies, that's part of what they learn about the drug that they're, they're making. Um, and so if something has low protein, but doesn't have a lot of affinity for protein, we aren't going to be giving doses as high. Now that might help you understand why some drugs are, um, uh, uh, one tablet is 500 milligrams, but yet you look at this other drug and it's 50 milligrams for one tablet. And why is that? Well, a lot of it has to do with how much drug is gonna be lost um, to the albumin. They have to give up a certain amount in order to get the free drug. Again, we don't have to understand that process, but what you do need to understand is when you have a patient whose albumin levels are not normal, you need to understand the drugs you're giving them more importantly than ever. Because if they are being given a drug that when you look it up in the drug book is highly protein bound, and you realize my patient's albumin levels are very low, you give this drug that the manufacturer, the pharmaceutical company has determined will be, will have um, only a certain percentage free because it is highly protein bound. And so they know that you have to give 500 milligrams to get 400 milligrams of active drug. Well, if your patient's albumin levels are low, what's going to happen is they're gonna get the whole 500 milligrams. They're not, there's not gonna be enough albumin for the, the drug to bind to. So now you're going to see maximized effect and probably maximized adverse effects in their patient. And so that really comes into play when you have somebody whose albumin levels are not normal and they have drugs, maybe more than one, that has protein binding as a big component of it. Not all drugs are affected that much by protein binding. Sometimes we have two drugs. I'm gonna say warfarin is one, and um, there's a, um, I think it's carbamepazine for seizures that are both highly protein bound. If you give those two drugs at the same time, they're both going to compete for those albumins, the seats at the table. And when the drug company studied those drugs, they studied them alone. Not, they didn't say, let's pull in another drug. And they only studied warfarin or they only studied carbamepazine. Well, what happens now is we put two drugs that are competing for those and one of the drugs is gonna lose. They're not gonna get seats at the table, which means they're going to have more unbound free drug, which means we are gonna have bigger effects from that drug than what we should expect. So I hope this helps a little bit with understanding protein binding um, and, and the effect it has. When we are learning about individual drugs, we will, um, we will, the ones that have, that are highly protein bound, that will be an important point that is made about the drug. If you don't see any information about protein binding when we are learning about individual drugs, that is probably because it's really a non-issue with that particular drug. Uh, but when you do see something that mentions protein binding, you need to pay attention to that and think about what would I have to do if my patient has altered albumin levels. And you will see that we will decrease doses normally uh, in, in people in order to prevent them from having adverse effects. I know we have some good videos also that are available that can help you understand the process uh, associated with protein binding and um, drugs. So I um, hope this helped a little bit and that you will come away with a deeper understanding of the protein binding and how it is used in pharmacology.